Hey everyone, it's Ken and Data Monkey back again. And in this week's episode of Monkey Shorts, we're going to look at a little bit more cube formula work. And specifically, what I want to look at is a particular issue when you're trying to flatten your cube formulas down that might bite you. All right, so I have my pivot table all set up here, but my goal is to extract just a single value that I can drive dynamically by drop downs here without having all of the extra work around the pivot table here. But there's one thing different between this week's pivot table and last week's pivot table, and that is that I have added a column field inside here for year. So it's now breaking down the sales and budget by year. And the important thing to recognize here is that we actually have two fields showing up in the columns area. One of them is values, which represents sales and budget to say put them on our columns. But the key thing is I've got more than one. And then what I'm going to show you will happen whether you have more than one field in both the rows or categories area. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to go to pivot table, analyze, all app tools, convert this into cube formulas. And now I'm going to run through the process of flattening this down like last week. So I have C11 here. I'll just go grab that. And just like last time, after the this workbook data model, we can see within the quotes the value set that we're going after. So I'm just going to copy that. We'll paste it in place here. I'm actually going to press Alt Enter to put in a line break. Control V to paste it. We'll go to the other side of this one here and press Alt Enter again to break this onto multiple rows just to make it a little easier to read. Now, D10 is the next one. Let's go grab sales. And you'll notice in the case of sales, after this workbook data model, we've actually got a curly brace and then we've got the year equals 2018 and the sales measure all in one place. So I'm going to grab all of this from curly brace to curly brace, Control C and hit Enter. And now we're going to paste it in place. Here we go, Enter. Let me just put another line break to put that final paren on the last line. I'm going to hit enter there and you can see that the value still works. So I'm going to move this up here, get rid of all the garbage that I don't need. That's fantastic and now we're going to retrofit and plummet so it's dynamic. So we'll start with beer. So quote and I'm going to change this to burgers right now. There we go. And now I'll just say okay on that. If I change this back to beer, looks good. That's great. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to do year. Quote and we'll grab 2019 and quote. And now I'm going to commit the formula and it tells me that I can't do it because there's a problem with it. And this is a little frustrating. It has to do with the fact that this is nested in an array and that's what the curly braces are all about. What's really frustrating about this to me, these are unnecessary. If I delete both the curly braces here and now go and hit enter, You'll notice that it works just fine and I can come back and set it back to 2018. Why is that the case? It makes no sense at all. So finally, I'm going to press Alt Enter here. I'm going to make my sales dynamic as well. And there we go. So the key thing to recognize here is you don't need those curly braces in this place. As a matter of fact, if you're trying to consolidate your formula down, you actually want to grab everything between the curly braces. And at that point, you can see that it's very easy to retrofit this in with cells and come up with the right values. Thank you for watching this episode of Monkey Shorts. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to click on the Skillwave logo on the bottom left in order to subscribe to our channel. Or if you'd like to see more videos in the series, click on the playlist tile on the right. And if you'd like to get more comprehensive training, you should definitely check out our website at skillwave.training.